Uh, on behalf of my wife, Gatri, and myself, our sincere apologies for our very late arrival. We were campaigning in Croydon this morning and the early afternoon uh, with uh, five Juma prayers to cover. And our candidate there, Lee Jasper, sends his fraternal greetings to all of you, as do all of his campaign team. They're watching uh, with not envy, because that's a vile emotion, but admiration, uh, the way that the campaign here in Rotherham is developing. Um, we're here uh, tonight and tomorrow for the rally in the afternoon and then back to Croydon for some Saturday night uh, activities there with a surgery in Bradford squeezed in between. Uh, so please forgive us uh, for the lateness of our arrival and congratulations. Uh, on this extraordinary uh, turnout on a cold Friday night and so late. Um, I uh, opened The Guardian yesterday uh, with some joy to read the headline that Labour was in a last minute dash to stop respect uh, in uh, Rotherham. Well, I'm not sure how the last minute dash felt to you, uh, if you've seen any evidence of it, uh, but uh, they're going to have to do a lot of dashing to stop the rise and rise of this campaign and this candidate, Yvonne Ridley. Before I talk about the campaign, I'd like to talk about the candidate. Uh, Yvonne Ridley is a sister of mine, uh, but I have many sisters. and She's a comrade of mine, and I have many comrades, though slightly fewer. Uh, but more importantly, she's a friend of mine, tried and tested, uh, and uh, in many dark days, loyal and uh, true. And so when she put her name forward for the Rotherham by-election, I was absolutely delighted. And all the signs are that she's doing extremely well. I think the key to that is that she can appeal uh, across communities. And that's going to be vital if we're going to win this constituency. We hope that the majority, maybe the vast majority, given what's happened in the Labour selection uh, of the Ummah, will be with us. That's as it should be, because she is a more faithful and better representative of that Ummah than any of the other candidates that are standing in the election, by definition. Uh, Can I switch off all mobiles? Also, uh, uh, also because her uh, activity over these last years uh, on the subject of Palestine, to which I shall refer again in a minute, the subject of, uh, of uh, Afghanistan, the, the, the subject of Iraq, uh, are all causes. Uh, in which she and I have worked shoulder to shoulder together. And Yvonne's work has been of outstanding quality and has reached millions of people here and abroad. Uh, all the world loves a revert, of course, at least all the Muslim world. But not every revert has made the kind of impact that she has made on the Muslim world. She's known from Khartoum to Beirut in the refugee camps in <coughs> Palestine on the streets of Iraq, which she and I regularly traveled to uh, when Iraq was under sanctions, trying to lift those sanctions, trying to avert the devastating war which occurred and which the Iraqi people are suffering from still. She made a promise to her captors. She was lucky in that she was captured by the Taliban, could have been worse, could have been the Americans, and she could have been in uh, Guantanamo Bay in an orange jumpsuit, uh, instead of here in her wonderful cowboy hat, uh, here with us in Rotherham. But she made a promise to her captors that she would sincerely study Islam, and that began a journey uh, which all of you know. But, despite the inevitable pull over the last 10 years uh, towards these international issues, which so uh, preoccupy so many of our minds, uh, Yvonne Ridley remains English. 
she remains white English. She remains a part of the working mass of the English population. And that's going to be important in the, in the contest. And uh, there are a few candidates that can, as it were, straddle both of these lines and can appeal uh, equally to the Muslim audience as well as the, um, the native English audience. And that's what we have to do. We have to have a campaign that, uh, that aims at both of these sectors. Uh, partly that is done by emphasizing the common purpose that we all have. After all, unemployment afflicts Muslim people and native English people in exactly the same way. They are equally unemployed. They are equally struggling to live on equally sparse benefits, housing shortages, the lack of opportunity for young people, and indeed the enticement to various forms of criminality the devil finding work for idle hands uh, affects all communities here in Rotherham. It's partly done by emphasizing the uh, common ground that everyone in Rotherham uh, feels, especially as the quality of representation, and this is the second thing that appeals to everyone and that we must emphasize. The quality of political representation in this town is just about as low as it can go. The reason we have a by-election is that your MP was a thief. There's no, <laughs> there's no other way of putting that. Only if, seven grand. Uh, yeah. that no, bad. thirteen. No, it was joking. thirteen. Yeah, what was it? it was thirteen thousand pounds. <laughs> I've seen that seven grand figure. You mustn't let him off the hook. Just because he, just because he plea bargained. Uh, he may have plea bargained seven. But the amount of. Uh, the amount of public money that was stolen was £13,000. Now, if the brother at the door there with the can of lager had stolen £13,000, he'd be in prison now. Yeah. If a DSS claimant had stolen £13,000 in benefits, they'd be in prison now. If any of the uh, brothers, sisters here had done a mortgage fraud for £13,000, they'd be in prison now. If they'd, uh, uh, if they'd falsely... Uh, uh, organized a bank loan on fake uh, figures, they'd be in prison now. But he's not in prison, he's on a beach. <laughs> he's on a beach with his non-existent computers and his £13,000 safely banked or already spent. Now, it doesn't get much lower than that. It's not, I think, since the 1960s that an MP, <coughs> equally a Labour MP, John Stonehouse, has been forced to resign because of such malfeasance and such theft from the public purse. And we must never allow a single argument, a single leaflet, a single poster, a single slogan to go by without reminding the people of Rotherham that they only have a by-election because their MP was a thief, a Labour MP, a thief, imagine. In parenthesis, I can say uh, as someone who clashed with Dennis McShame uh, over many, many years. Uh, he spent his time in Parliament being the voice of everyone other than Rotherham. He was the voice of Israel. He was the voice for war in Iraq. He was the voice for Tony Blair. He was the voice for anybody, everybody, except for Rotherham. But of course, the shame that Labour has brought to the town doesn't end with Dennis. McShane. The local authority, which they have miscontrolled, uh, has presided over some very big shame uh, that you don't need me to go into. Uh, but no conversation about this election can avoid the fact that everything that could have been mishandled and wrongly handled uh, here in Rotherham has been mishandled, <coughs> has been wrongly handled. And this argument appeals to all communities. But the third strand is that Yvonne, as someone from the northeast of England, from a steel-making area, from a coal-mining area, has gone through in her lifetime exactly the same experience as the native English people in this town have done, of Thatcherism decimating the industrial base, leaving an industrial desert 
and everybody knows it's hard to find a drink of water in the desert. And that's what this area and the northeast and so many other parts of this country have become. The Thatcherites murdered these towns and the new labor Thatcherites who came after them uh, have continued to tramp the dirt down, have done nothing to resurrect the loyal heartlands that they once took entirely for granted. Well, I don't think they'll be taking us for granted any longer because we already have created a state of utter chaos inside the New Labour Party. When I read in The Guardian yesterday, I hadn't realised it was so bad, that the Labour candidate, whom they expect to be the Labour MP, was chosen by precisely 13 people. 13 votes is what she got. And by the way, she beat by just two votes a retired wing commander from the Royal Air Force. If you had told me when I joined the Labour Party 40 years ago or more that the day would come when Labour would choose or almost choose for one of its apparently solid seats a wing commander from the Royal Air Force who's just been bombing the people of Afghanistan and the people of Iraq, I just would not have believed you. It tells you everything you need to know about what Labour became under the leadership of Tony Blair. A wing commander, a bomber, almost became the Labour candidate in this town. You'll have inferred from what I've said, I rather hoped that she would get it, because the propaganda uh, possibilities there would have been uh, uh, immense. But they've chosen instead someone who is scarcely a champion. The real champion for Rotherham is Yvonne Ridley. It's true. The, the reality is that Labour is in a state of utter, utter, absolute chaos. And we have to capitalize on that. Uh, I understand that uh, more than half of the audience walked out. Many have torn up their cards. Maybe even some are here. Certainly some have been writing to me indicating that they'll be voting for us. And we hope that they will. But the fact that the Labour Party is in such chaos harms them not just in the Muslim community in Rotherham, but harms them much more widely uh, across the city. Bear this in mind, that what we can call the white, native, English part of the electorate will have many, many choices on offer on the 29th of November. It's not the Muslim community with us against the white community with one other party. Very far from it. The biggest party amongst white voters on the 29th of November will be the no voting party. The, you saw the turnout in Manchester Central yesterday. 19%. The lowest... 18%. The lowest turnout in a by-election since 1922. Record low turnout. And that will be the same here. The, the majority, I'm telling you now, the majority of white voters will not vote in this election. And then, for those who do vote, there are many uh, options on offer. In uh, 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 Corby, UKIP, the hard right, anti-foreigner, anti-European party, got over 5,000 votes and came third, driving the Liberal Democrats into, again, uh, the abyss of losing their deposit, which I predict they'll also lose their deposit here in Rotherham. But UKIP will poll strongly here, and they'll take votes off the Tories, but they'll also take votes off Labour. The BNP, uh, catering to the very dregs of uh, racism and Islamophobia, and feasting on the opportunities that they have been given by the mismanagement in this town, will also poll strongly. Uh, the English Democrats, Ditto, and other um, uh, organizations like them 
uh, as well as independent candidates. So Labour cannot, in any sense, they cannot, in any sense, consider that they have uh, any section of this community already in the bag. They manifestly don't have the Muslim community in the bag. If they ever did, they certainly don't now after what happened to the Muslim candidate uh, down in London, not even good enough for the shortlist, but good enough to be the deputy leader uh, of the council and ruling Rotherham. Um, and they don't have any other section of the community in their bag either. But we have, for a variety of reasons, mainly <coughs> our record of work and the character of our candidate and such reputation as the rest of us have managed to build over many years of service, uh, we have, I think, a, a, a flying start. Now, um, it's in one way unfortunate that none of us in here are betting men or women. If we had been, then a hundred pounds placed at the beginning of this week with William Hills or Ladbrokes uh, would have yielded uh, 200 to 1, then 33 to 1, then 25 to 1, then 12 to 1, then 10 to 1, then 9 to 2, which is the last odds that I saw. What that means is that the bookmakers, who in my experience read the runes very well in elections, if I tell you that in my case, the bookmakers had me at 200 to 1, and they closed the betting several days before polling. They refused to take any further bets because they knew uh, that something really big was happening. And I think that they know that something really big is happening in Rotherham too. We lack two things, and one of them, uh, from tonight's evidence, appears at least to be uh, becoming less of a problem. That is, we need people. We need people to get the tens of thousands of leaflets and the thousands of posters that we have produced out into the hands of the voters in Rotherham. We need the posters in the shops, in people's windows, and we need the leaflets in people's hands. So if every one of you can set yourselves a task of bringing another, perhaps more than one other, into this campaign, into this rather fine, I may say, election headquarters, must be paying for this, which leads, me, which leads me to the second of our problems. We are, especially as we're fighting two by-elections at the same time, catastrophically short of funds. We would like to have the open-top bus down from Bradford uh, as often as possible. Our experience is that it is a devastating election weapon, as the respect councillors and other uh, activists from Bradford can testify. But that costs about £450 a day. And that's a lot of money. And we don't have it. So I'm appealing to you to try and find us people who will make an investment in this victory. Investment in this sense, not that they're going to get a dividend in cash <laughs> terms, but an investment in this sense, that you're going to go from chalk to cheese. You're going to go from Dennis McShame to Yvonne Ridley, and believe me, as someone who has worked with her closely over many, many years, that will completely transform politics in this town. <clears throat> when the local council elections come along, on the back of an Yvonne Ridley win, we'll see councillor after councillor uh, for respect in Rotherham being elected. So everybody has a stake in this. And we'd hate it, wouldn't we, if we narrowly were defeated on election day. And we thought if we'd only been able to deliver one more leaflet, if only we could have had the bus for two or three more days, if only we could have had that one extra rally, if only we uh, had been able to put on some samosas for <laughs> workers out in the cold uh, on, uh, on election day. So I'm appealing for these two things, for people to be the engine of this campaign and for financial help so that we can uh, get the resources in the field uh, that we, we need to win the battle. I said I'd come back, if I may, to what's happening now to the people in Palestine, in Gaza, 
who are under, right at this minute, as we speak, uh, shells are exploding, <coughs> rockets are being fired from F-15s and F-16s, 600 bombing raids on the tiny, I don't know if anybody here been in Gaza, but let me tell you that it's, tw it's 21 miles long and one and a half miles across. It's a tiny piece of land. It's, uh, it's smaller, much smaller than Rotherham. 600 aerial attacks were made today. And of course, when the buildings come tumbling down and the masonry and the ash clears, uh, the people who are being dragged out dead are small children. Even the small son of a BBC employee, uh, Omar, aged one, a uh, happy baby, dragged, dead, torched, roasted out of the ruins in Gaza yesterday. Not that it made much of a splash on the BBC, the Bush and Blair Corporation, as I now call it. The people in Palestine know Yvonne Ridley very well. They don't have a vote in this election, but you have a vote. And you can vote for them, you can vote for the people under occupation and bombardment everywhere for no other reason than that they are Muslim people who are determined to free themselves from dictatorship and foreign tutelage. They don't have a vote yet, but you all have a vote. And in Yvonne Ridley, you have a champion for you and for them. And I'm hoping that you'll keep that message in your heart. Nobody's being asked to give their blood here. All they're being asked is to put an X on a piece of paper and to elect somebody who will work in their interests. It should be a simple cell, certainly simpler than what our brothers and sisters in Palestine are going through this evening. So that's really all that I have to say. I'm sure that Sister Yvonne will want to supplement uh, what I have had to say. I'm looking forward to being with you uh, this evening and tomorrow and then again next week, and as many times as I can possibly be here uh, during the election, bearing in mind my other uh, duties. Wassalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, for those words, George. I have spent the last few days talking to all sorts of people from all different faiths, cultures, backgrounds, and it's very, very clear to me that what I'm campaigning against is cover-ups and corruption. Not just corruption in recent years, um, as in Dennis McShane, but corruption going back decades. And top of the list is the child grooming scandal. And I want to know why. Why Labour councillors sat for more than a decade and kept this scandal down. Why they allowed this horrible crime to carry on silently. Why did Labour councillors continue in the cover-up? And not just the Labour councillors, the last MP must have been privy to this as well. Sean Wright um, apparently has, is now the, the new police commissioner in this area. And when he was campaigning, he said, I am going to make this uh, scandal my number one priority. <coughs> Um, as police commissioner and I'm thinking why didn't you make it your number one priority when you were sitting as chair yeah. of the child protection committee <laughs> so there's lots of questions to ask here and uh, while we're on with it it's worth considering this and I'll come back to it later now that he has become police commissioner there will be an election on the council to replace him. So just, I want you to think, keep that in the back of, um, in the back of your mind. 
Um, Cover-ups, again, uh, it won't affect many, well, it won't affect probably any of you, you all look too young, but um, all grief is a word that brings tears to the eyes of the mining community. These uh, heroic men who fought to save the pit industries, who fought and the, the, during the, the miners' strike when Thatcher took on the miners and laid waste to communities, the heartbeat of the fight was just down the road at Orgreave. And there is a scandal there which, which involved hundreds of miners who were demonised, who were arrested, who were brutalised, who still to this day have not got justice. And what I also want to call on is end the cover-up over all grief and let's find out who lied, who lied about those great men, those courageous men who battled so hard on the picket lines to save their communities, to save their jobs. More than 10,000 jobs have gone, but those 10,000 miners are in this community somewhere and I want to bring some respect and dignity back to them by calling for an inquiry. Um, a Hillsborough-style inquiry to find out who was involved in the cover-ups, who was involved in the lies, and who um, demonised these, uh, these great men. I also want to know why the CEO of the Hospital Trust is still in a job. Why is this man breaking in 250 grand a year this is the man, this Brian James, this is the man who introduced, who spent £50 million on an electronic patient registering system, and it doesn't even work. And then he spent another £450,000 bringing in consultants to find out where his money was going, why he couldn't make the budget. Any struggling family in Rotherham could have looked at the books and told him. Well, for a start off, we can save 250,000 like that by getting rid of him. But instead, he wants to lose 750 jobs. He calls it natural wastage. Well, there's 100 natural wastage jobs that are going before Christmas. People who are just going to be thrown onto the door just before Christmas. He calls it natural wastage while he's sitting there earning 250 grand a year. I want to know why. Why is he still in this uh, this job? So, you know, this, um, and I want to know why this um, 50 million quid on a, on a patient registering system and it doesn't work. Who got the contracts? Why did they get the contracts? Why is nobody making a Back big stink is. about it? it and, I, yeah. and I said to you before, you know, they call it natural, natural wastage. There's another euphemism which, uh, which everybody's fond of using in new labour, in Tories. Um, well, you can't tell the difference between them these days. But the uh, collateral damage. Collateral damage. Oh, God. It's a, it's a term that's used hundreds of Hundreds of British soldiers, men army, yeah. and women, have now been killed in this war in Afghanistan. Collateral damage. I've sat, I've stood in uh, remembrance services and I've read the names of the dead out for True the Stop work. the War Coalition. Names of um, men and women from Yorkshire as well who have been wasted in this senseless war. Now, George, if you remember, was thrown out of the Labour Party because he called these soldiers lions led by donkeys. <laughs> it's still the same. They're making a big fuss today because apparently Paddy Ashdown thinks the troops should be brought back home. We have been saying that since the inception of respect. Everybody else is jumping on the bandwagon now. We made the call, bring the troops back home. I have been through the killing fields of Afghanistan. I've been back there quite a few times. And those soldiers are being shot in the back <coughs> by Afghan soldiers. They're being bombed overhead by the Americans. And then they've got the Taliban in front of them. 
and for why. Nobody can say, nobody can say why they are in Afghanistan. Nobody can say what the mission is anymore. All we know is they're going to pull the plug and run like hell after 2014. Forget all that. Bring the troops back now before Christmas. <laughs> While we set up our office today, I had a pensioner walk in. 79-year-old woman, socialist all her life. And she said, I can't trust the Labour Party anymore. Tell me a little bit about respect. Um, I said, we haven't got our leaflets yet. I'll come round and see you. But we sat and talked, and she talked about pensioner poverty. Why should a woman, 79 years old, be lying awake at night wondering how she's going to survive week by week by week. It is a disgrace that we are putting our old people through this, uh, this shame. And it's not just the, the old people. 25-year-olds and under are going to lose their housing benefit. Now, it's not just of a, a concern to the young people. I've spoken to a few landlords in the area, and they're in a dilemma. You know, a lot of landlords do have a social conscience, and they're saying, what are we going to do with these young people when they can't pay their rent? How, how can we accept a 25-year-old or a 23-year-old into our house when we know that they're not going to get housing benefits? Imagine this, a kid of 16 who's gone out to work, left home, gone out to work, low-paid, He's getting his housing benefits, and four or five years down the line, he's told, from April next year, you are going to lose your housing benefit. How can he survive? What is he going to do? How can he keep a roof over his head, and if he becomes homeless, he'll lose his job? And if all of that's thrown on him, he might even turn to crime. That greedy sod, Dennis McShane, had his snout... In the, in the trough, and he was on over a hundred grand a year, and he still couldn't manage. You know, what about these kids who are going to lose their, uh, their housing benefit? And then I was going through the Rotherham advertiser, and there's a woman who's been fighting cancer for two years. She's been staring death in the face <coughs> for two years. She's lost her hair, she's on chemotherapy. <coughs> She's struggling, and she's told, oh, you're fit to work now, and if you don't go back to work, you're going to lose your benefits. How can you say that to somebody who is fighting cancer? But it's happening. But what's interesting is that this company called Atos, who oh. makes the decision, well, has been paid a £110 million contract. Atos is the brainchild of labour. So when you get Mrs. Champion or whatever she's called talking about, oh, we must challenge the Tory cuts, we must challenge this one, she wants to look in her own bloody backyard and see what Labour's been doing. She has no idea what it's like to be working class. When I was 17, I got my Labour Party card and I was so proud. She got hers last year. You know, just last year. And you think, that's funny. She, she suddenly discovered the trade unions two weeks ago and she's joined a trade union. She'll be discovering Palestine next. <laughs> After Israel has finished with its bombing campaign. So you've got all, all, of, all of this going on. And uh, so please don't look in, at, at Labour as, um, as the party that is going to do any good for you. They're in it for themselves. From the moment I arrived, they have tried to undermine this campaign. They have tried to threaten people who want to support me. They have leaned on people who want to give me venues. They've said, you know what? You're up for a grant very soon. I hope you're going to get it. Oh, 
you've got planning permission coming very soon. In fact, you've got planning permission for your mosque in a couple of weeks' time. Let's not rock the boat. These are the tactics of snivelling cowards, and what I'd say yeah. to them is, come to me! Yeah. 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 to the real reason they don't want me in town. They couldn't give a stuff who goes to Westminster representing Rotherham. They really couldn't care. What they're interested in is their own little carve-up, their own little stitch-up, their own little comfortable situation here in Rotherham. And if you elect me, they know it won't be the end, they know it will be the, the beginning. They know that respect will not stop there, but respect will go on for council positions. And why not? You tell me why those councillors are claiming expenses 80% more than Sheffield councillors. Why? Why is that happening? Are the 80% ah. better? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've worked it out. We could actually get rid of about a quarter of them yeah. to put them on a par with Sheffield and start working for people instead of threatening them and telling them what they can and can't do. This is supposed to be a democracy. You know, not a, a tyrannical rule, but that's what, uh, that's what they're doing. They're leaning on people. There's probably somebody out there now looking at you all and wondering if they can nobble you, if they can nobble your family and say, what's your son, your cousin been doing coming to this meeting? What's These are the threats. If they threaten you, if they threaten you, tell them to have the kahunas to come in here and see yeah. me. Yeah. 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 Coming back to the guy who's just got the police commissioner's job, there is a council position coming up soon. And I don't know, I've spoken to lots of people and there's lots of contenders in here tonight who could do ten times the job of any of those Labour councillors, those miserable Labour councillors who have been slapped around and humiliated by the Labour Party that have forced them to candidates, not of their choice, but of what the London Labour Party wants them to take. They've had their hissy fit, they had this debacle of a meeting, and as soon as Labour, their Labour bosses smacked their hands and said, fall in line, they were straight in line like slaves. Well, when I get on my knees, it's to pray to God. You know, it's my it's about time those Labour councillors just started to man up and look at the responsibilities and the honour of serving people in Rotherham. They are the people's servants. It's not the other way round. And you need to remind them of that. You elect me to Westminster, I will be reminding them daily, every hour on the hour. The one or the first pledge that I made when I came here was to make a point of all those MPs who have their snouts in the trough. And I said, I will not claim any personal expenses if you elect me. And I mean that. <laughs> Respect isn't just about getting me elected. Respect is what you deserve. Respect is what the people of Rotherham need. You can deliver it. My number is nine. So November the 29th, Vote for number nine, vote for Yvonne Ridley, vote for respect. It's what you deserve. And if I do a crap job, you can kick me out after a couple of years. But give me a chance, give yourselves a chance. It's time for a change, it's time for a renaissance, it's time for the Rotherham revival. Thank you very much. Wow.
absolutely magnificent address. Uh, I, I hope Labour has someone either in here or outside, because I hope that they'll report <coughs> back faithfully what they heard here uh, this evening. Does anyone have any questions for Yvonne or for myself? Yes, or, George. I've, yes, brother. I've got one. My name's Patrick. Go on, Patrick. Five times on the Uber channel in support of your campaign, you actually spoke to me. I don't know if you can remember or not. Um, about Palestine. Oh, my channel. Yeah. Oh, my channel, yeah. Welcome. I've heard, I don't know how true it is, and Omar can uh, probably yeah. support this, that <laughs> Councillor Sean Rice isn't going to step down despite being elected yeah. Police and Crime Commissioner. So he will be PCC Councillor, School Governor. I'm not sure if that would be legal, but I'm we do, sure we do have a very good lawyer in the room. Yeah. yeah, he can actually do that. Yeah. Well, wow. That's the rumour. Well, maybe he can answer. I can't see how that wouldn't be a conflict of interest for myself. Yeah. Bear in uh, mind, he was on the police authority yeah. as well as standing. Yeah, 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 but uh, well, well, there's another job we'll be calling to go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any other questions? George, yes, uh, brother. I want to ask you, when is the open top bus going to come and how are we going to go about it in terms of all the areas? Because there's about seven different areas. Mm. We need to target seven different areas and how we can make effort on them areas in terms well, of getting people's votes. We're, we're going to uh, retire from this meeting to uh, a smaller meeting uh, with people who've got money. Uh, and I'm, I have the task of trying to talk them into giving us some. Um, and I've made the pitch that I made here tonight. So the answer to your question depends on those discussions, to be honest. Right at this moment, uh, the open top bus cannot come because we can't pay for it. We've already burst the uh, bank. Uh, well, I'll be candid with you. Um, individuals in this room have paid from their own pocket for these leaflets and uh, posters. We can't keep doing that. Uh, so, I'll be able to tell you that better tomorrow, uh, once I've discussed with the people here who have already given and who are taking me to meet other people that might give. But the answer, theoretically, would be as often as we can financially afford to get it here, and we cannot have it here too much. If it was here every day, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be too much. George? Yes, Brother Ray. One bus, one day. I'll pick it. Yeah. Brother Ray is a very uh, dear friend of mine, uh, even dearer now. Uh, uh, he, uh, I, I was thinking while I was talking that he himself is a former uh, Royal Air Force man and his uh, son is a Royal Air Force man. Um, and he uh, actually paid for a barrage balloon to uh, float over Bradford during my uh, by-election. So once we've got the bus out of it, maybe we'll, we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll go for the barrage with Great, God bless you and all your family. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, brother. George, uh, I mean, I can put myself forward for that ward. Bring Brinsworth and Catcliffe, I'll do all the leafleting that he's doing in that area oh, sure. and the shop windows. Yes. Sorry, I didn't see Naveed there. Naveed was my election agent, the mastermind of my uh, victory here. And he and young Joseph uh, and others uh, that I'll be better able to thank tomorrow once I've got my bearings more uh, are fueling engineering, if you like, this, uh, this campaign. So Brother Naveed has just taken note of that. Thanks very much for that uh, offer. Any, anybody else able to offer a day of the bus? I know it's a tall order for uh, people who don't have money, but if you know anybody, yeah, if you know anybody, or even two, three, four people that could club together and uh, and uh, fund the bus for one day, then we'll begin to fill in those I'll days. There are brothers put yeah. hundred pounds to the bus. Someone else yeah. just placed another day. That's yeah. two days plus a hundred pounds yeah. more. Yeah. For that, I, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but bear in mind that if you can't do one day yourselves, maybe three or four, five, six of you can get together and uh, and sponsor uh, one day. Uh, and uh, I hope my discussions later this evening will also be 
uh, productive. Any other political questions, personal questions, or too personal? Uh, Gary, yes, uh, I've got another question to ask you. Uh, in regards to this Palestine crisis at this moment, yes. Tom, people have been saying that um, you, yourself, you're a good speaker. Um, can you raise up an issue about Palestine or... Because uh, well, I'm, uh, uh, because it's I'm affecting on, a lot of people out there, and they want to know about what's going on. There is a meeting the tomorrow, you yeah. know, that like Sheffield Town Hall, uh, outside Town Hall. Yeah, there is a protest tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. And there was one, one yesterday. Twelve o'clock. Yeah. Twelve o'clock. Yeah. Twelve o'clock yeah. tomorrow in, uh, yeah. in Sheffield. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we've got. Yeah, so uh, going of course, both Yvonne and I are doing everything that we can to highlight the issue. Um, I've tabled a, a motion in, in Parliament on it. I've been tweeting furiously about it uh, to almost 100,000 people uh, several times a day. In fact, on the first day, 30, 40 times. And the Kashmir um, issue is very dear as well. Of course it is. And you know that on Kashmir, I'm organizing a convoy to Kashmir next year, which will gather people and vehicles from all over Britain, and we'll try to reach the occupied land. If we can, we'll get as far to the... Yes, I hope you will. Uh, I hope we'll have plenty of people from Rotherham there. I may tell you that just this month uh, I was refused a visa by India. Uh, I was supposed to attend a conference in Goa, but they uh, told me to uh, come into the High Commission and if I was prepared to uh, cancel the convoy to Kashmir, uh, that I could have the visa in 10 minutes. This is all. Uh, recorded, by the way, uh, that I could have the visa in 10 minutes. Well, you can be sure that I told them where to stick their visa. Something that George doesn't know, um, I've been in talks with the Pakistan High Commissioner about taking 100 women into Kashmir to set up a peace camp in the line of control. And I'm sure if we dovetail our ideas together, what I also want to do is to encourage women on the Indian side to move um, and come up to the line of control. I would go and mobilize uh, those women on the Indian side, but I too have been refused a visa. <laughs> with calling the Indian occupying army a bunch of thieves, rapists and looters. They took it very personally. <laughs> so um, I also have visa difficulties. But uh, something to think about, regardless of the outcome in, uh, in Rotherham. Uh, but wouldn't it be great if a Rotherham MP was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, please um, uh, think about yeah. that as well. Well, look, brothers, sisters, I, I, we need you back here at 2 o'clock tomorrow for the uh, launch and for the, uh, the event. Uh, so, uh, with your permission, uh, I'll take your leave and go and try and raise the money for the bus. But just, just... I'll pay you bus fare. <laughs> <laughs> With this thought, we have a real chance here to take the power in Rotherham. Let's we take have it. a real chance to clean the stables, to be a new broom that can sweep away the rottenness that has gone before. We have the people in this room and the people we represent, we have a real chance to take the power in Rotherham and change it for the better and change it for good. Let's do it. Let's do it.